repairing a two inch scale foul attraction engine part three. Dismantling the live steam injector water valve, looking at the best way to repair the problem and examining the water gauge. This fitting at the left hand side right down at the bottom of the bunker tank is the water valve that allows the control of water from the tank to the injector. You can just about see in this clip the rubber pipe that is fitted to the injector overflow to stop all the water leaking out from the tank onto the ground. Clearly there is something wrong with the water valve. What I'm doing at the moment is unpiping the injector from the steam valve because the steam valve appears to be loose. A short piece of pipe goes from the steam valve on the turret and I've just disconnected the extension pipe that goes from here down to the injector's steam inlet. One thing that I've noticed so far to my dismay with this traction engine is all of the steam unions are over tightened and I mean really tight. This particular steam union was difficult to remove because the over tightening had altered the thread form. Miniature steam engine fittings, particularly brass ones, must not be over tightened. The joints just need nipping up. To be honest this fitting is not looking good and the operating lever is very rusty. This is the gland nut that I'm removing. And also if you look closely in this clip you can see some really bad soft soldering. To my surprise there was nothing holding the lever onto the spindle of the valve and it's rusty. This is a very simple hole through the middle bypass valve and the part is very loose to start with. Let's have a closer look at it. The only place for this part is in the scrap bin. It's made from mild steel, not stainless steel, so it's no good at all, not fit for purpose. I could easily make another one from stainless steel. The diameter of this is a quarter of an inch. But in my opinion, it's not worth the effort of making a new valve, because if the original valve was like this, the bore of the brass fitting won't be too good either. I intend to replace this valve in the bunker tank, so we'll have to repipe the injector. The injector for the moment can go in the red box. The customer also mentioned that there was a bit of a leak from the top of the water gauge around this area, so I think it's a good time to have a closer look at this. I don't need to video this, I'm just reseating the glass. There's an o-ring at each end and it should be fine. If it isn't, I will replace the glass. The customer also mentioned a leak in the area of this tap and as you can see it wasn't fully tight in the fitting. I think with the help of some Loctite 542 I'm going to set the tap in this position. To remove this tap is quite a lot of work. I didn't linger on the water gauge for too long. Over the years I've made many videos showing how to go on with water gauges. All I've really done is clean the glass and tighten the nuts. I will thoroughly test this once I fill the boiler with water. For the moment, with the help of some Loctite 542, I'm replacing the blanking plug in the top of the gauge. This original water tap fitting really has to go in the bin. The more that I look at the dreadful attempt at a soft solder leak repair, the worse it gets. With the fitting out of the way, it's looking better already. The next thing to go is the rusty handle. This is the flange fitting on the bunker tank itself, it doesn't look very pretty and the thread's a bit damaged, but looking on the bright side it would appear to be held to the bunker tank with stainless steel Allen cap head bolts. Make the most of it while you can, this is the last time I'm going to show this horrible valve. I'm going to replace this water valve with a commercial fitting. This clip shows a standard 5 16 by 32 union cone next to a union nut. The piece at the right hand side of this image was the original adapter that held the tap to the main bunker tank's fitting. I'm going to fit a commercially manufactured professional live steam injector water valve. I need to find an intelligent way of fitting this to the flange on the bunker tank. Removing the flange would take a long time, so I'm assuming that to be okay. When I put an allen key in one of the socket cap screws, it moved slightly, so really it wants tightening up. And the only way I can do this is to remove the inspection hatch to the right hand side, which will give me the access that I require to the nut connected to the Allen cap head bolt. Once I'd removed all the nuts from around the inspection hatch, I used the Stanley knife blade to lever it off the studs. It is absolutely vital that no air can enter the line 
to the injector because it will not work if there is air in the feed water line. Here I'm just having a feel at the position of the nut and how tight it is. It took quite some time with a sharply bent spanner to tighten this nut. I didn't bother videoing that because all you could see is my hand. There is quite a lot of damage and flaky paint in this area, so I took this opportunity to use my Proxon motor tool with a wire brush to remove any loose paint. What I'm going to do is repaint this part of the engine. Eventually I will paint the area with etching primer, then fill any imperfections with cellulose stopper and give the entire area a coat of black paint. But the next job is to successfully fit this water valve into the flange on the bunker tank. And no, I'm not going to use that small threaded part that I got out of the old valve. I will show how I fitted the injector water valve in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.